how I long for simplicity. Not really in a material sense. While I do believe it's good to only have what is useful and beautiful, I am no minimalist. I like my walls and corners filled with craft and color. It is a simplicity of heart that I crave. Charles Spurgeon, in his devotional Morning and Evening, wrote, Now it is the rule of nature that the inward affects the outward. As light shines from the center of the lantern through the glass, when therefore the truth is kindled within, its brightness soon beams forth in the outward life and conversation. It is said that the food of certain worms colors the cocoons of silk which they spin. And just so the nutriment upon which a man's inward nature lives gives a tinge to every word and deed proceeding from him. To walk in the truth imports a life of integrity, holiness, faithfulness, and simplicity. The natural product of those principles of truth which the gospel teaches and which the Spirit of God enables us to receive. Spurgeon also writes in another entry, In the first place, the gospel is very simple. So Christians should be simple and plain in their habits. There should be about our manner, our speech, our dress, our whole behavior, that simplicity which is the very soul of beauty. A slow and simple life is not possible apart from Christ. It is a growing trend, yes, and there are many creatives that capture it well, and it's easy to think it's merely an aesthetic. But it is not so. We must have God to rest our hearts in and the gospel to anchor our lives in. Simplicity of the heart must be what beautifies our lives. We must bake our gingerbread to the glory of God. We must string our cranberries to the glory of God. It is the only way to make our earthly toil transcendent. Working unto man rather than the Lord is vanity or a chasing after the wind, as the preacher in Ecclesiastes describes. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. The world is restless and weighty, but the Lord's children drink from a better well. The Gospel of John records Jesus' words to the woman at the well, and he said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst, but the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. It is Christmas time. The world is going to begin offering us more. Buy more, do more, be more. But the world cannot satisfy our appetites. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live. My friends, that rich food is Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. 
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Let us not spend our labor for that which does not satisfy. Instead, may the Lord make us women of pure devotion to him. Simplicity of the heart, that which is the very soul of beauty.